Hello everyone! Welcome to a mathematical STEM box. My name is Angus McAndrew. I am a researcher and a lecturer here at the Mathematical Sciences Institute at the Australian National University. Let me start off with a game here called the Polite Chocolate Game. Now I don't have a block of chocolate here. What I have is a bunch of blocks, which I'm going to use to simulate a block of chocolate. Let me make a block of chocolate. Let me just pick a size. Let's say three by, what's a good size of chocolate block? I'm going to be generous to myself. I'm going to have a three by eight chocolate block all to myself. This is a two player game. You can of course play it with more players and just have them work in teams, each team deciding what each move is going to be. So here's how the game goes. On your turn, a player can split the chocolate block along one of the seams, along one of the lines. So they can, I could break the chocolate block here, I could break the chocolate block here, and then once you've broken it into two pieces, you take the smaller of the two pieces. If they're equal, you just take whichever one. So for instance, on my turn, I could break it here, take off this, and then I would take these six blocks here and that's what would be left. It would then be the other player's turn and they would do the same thing, break it somewhere and take a certain number, the smaller or equal half. You go back and forth in this way, so break it, take a piece, break it, take a piece, break it, take a piece. You're always taking the smaller piece because it's polite. You want to be polite, you take the smaller piece. Also, because we're being polite, you win the game if you give your opponent the last piece. So you break it, break it, and then if it's my turn here, I would take this piece and then I would give you the last piece. And that would be a winning position for me because I gave away the last piece of chocolate. So, let's simulate a game now just to see how it plays out. I'll have two players here, left hand and right hand. Let's see who wins. So left hand will start by taking these pieces here. So they've broken it along that seam and taken these pieces. Right hand will do the same. They'll break it and they have, remember they always take the smaller half because they're being polite. So they take this piece. Left hand will now break it along this seam and take this piece. Right hand will break it here and take these pieces. Left hand will break it here and therefore they have to take these pieces. Let's get these all out of the way. So now we're down to this game, it's right hand's turn. Right hand breaks it here and takes these two pieces. And now left hand breaks it, takes a piece, and they give the last piece to right hand. So left hand is the winner for this game. What do you think? Do you think either player had a better strategy they could have employed? Do you see any moves they could have made that would have given them a better chance to win? Explore it yourself. Try some examples. Play against your friends and see if you can figure out how to win the polite chocolate game. Now, I'm sure you'd like to know what the winning strategy is, but I'm not in the business of spoiling that for you. So I'm gonna tell you right now, pause the video, explore the problem yourself, and once you're ready, unpause and come back to see the answer. So pause now. All right, have you explored it? Do you have an idea of how to win? What you might have noticed is that this two by two block is a pretty interesting case. If it's left hand's turn, what could they do? They have two possibilities. They could break here and here. Either way, they're taking two of the four and leaving two for the right hand. So once it's two by two, the right hand says, okay, well, I just take one of the remaining two, give you the last one and I win. So two by two is a losing position for left hand here. There are other positions that you might notice are losing positions. For instance, three by one is similarly a losing position because no matter what left hand does, right hand will always be left with a two by one where they can win. You can extrapolate this out and you can notice that certain positions are always going to be losing positions. For instance, any square shape is a losing position because no matter what one player does, the other player can always give them back a perfect square, eventually getting down to two by two, eventually getting down to one by one. 
So if you've got a perfect square, that's a losing position. But those aren't the only losing positions as we saw. Three by one was also a losing position. The issue is if you give your opponents the opportunity to move towards that perfect square position. So for instance, let's now look at three by seven. All right, what can I do? Well, if I break it along one of these seams, I will leave the other player with either three by six, three by five, or three by four. No matter which one of those I give them, on their turn, they can always take enough to give me back a three by three perfect square. And as we said, that's gonna be a problem. So we see that three by seven is also a losing position. What ends up happening is there's a very precise formula that tells you which exact side lengths give you losing positions. Turns out the key thing is divisibility by two or a power of two. Now, if they're equal, they're equal. Otherwise, what you do is you look at the numbers you've got, you add one to each and you divide them. If that number is a power of two, that is a losing position. So one by three, let's test this. One by three, I claimed was a losing position because if I add one to one, I get two. If I add one to three, I get four. Four divided by two is two. One by seven now. So one by seven, I'm claiming also is a losing position because seven plus one is eight, one plus one is two, and eight divided by two is four, a power of two. Let's test this as a losing position to see if the theory works. All right. So the first player can take, split it, and they will end up taking either one, two, or three, giving the other player either six, five, or four. And no matter which of those you give them, they can leave you with three, one, a losing position. So it's a funny formula. Add one to each side length, test if the quotient is a power of two. Now, why is that the right formula? Well, that one, I'll leave it to you to think about. Why is that the case? Why is this formula tells you exactly what the losing positions are? You may be wondering what sort of mathematics is underlying this puzzle. There's a lot going on. On the one hand, there's a bit of game theory. Can we figure out the winning position given a certain setup? What move does it make sense for us to do? Can we force our opponent into a certain situation where no matter what they do, we can create a certain game state? Another thing going on is the powers of two that appeared in that formula. If you have a different setup, do you find something else? Does divisibility show up in a different way? Do powers of another number become relevant? Is there a different formula? These are the mathematical ideas that you have underlying this problem. Enjoy exploring everyone.